Fillers are a substance that have evolved um, greatly over the past 10, 15 years. And they are basically injectable materials that you can safely inject into the face typically to fill in something that, that's greater than a fine line. So areas that we often fill are the areas here, if there's a hollowing there, the cheekbones to enhance them, the jawline, the lips, even the ear lobule. As people age, the lobule can get floppy and a lot of people have a hard time holding earrings in their ear lobes. And now there are probably 20 different options for fillers. So the best thing to do is if you feel like you need filler um, and are lacking volume in your face, which naturally happens as we age, then go see a plastic surgeon who does filler injectables with some regularity and ask their opinion on what the best one to use is because different areas of the face do better with different types of fillers. And it's too much for you to research it because they're literally many, many, many different options. Are there completely different filler substances that are put in the face? Yes, there are. There are some that are considered permanent and there are some that are considered semi-permanent and some go away very, very quickly. The majority of the fillers that I use in my practice are made of hyaluronic acid, which is a natural substance found in the body, but this is chemically produced. And the nice thing about hyaluronic acid is it's very forgiving, it's very soft. And if per chance you don't like the way it looks, it can be um, eliminated with the injection of an enzyme that destroys it. Fat is a great substance to use as a filler in the face or in other parts of the body. We use it all over the body. Um, and we essentially do liposuction where we remove fat from an area where you have a little extra. And then we process it in the operating room or in the office and get just the fatty element of the fat. So not the, the liquid that surrounds it. And then we take that fat and we inject it where we want it. So a good example is the lips or the breast or even depressed scars. People who've had liposuction in the past and have divots or, or deformities from that liposuction, we can often correct that with fat as a filler. The benefit of fat is that it's your own body and that it will last forever. Not all of it, but a portion of the fat that you inject will last forever. So that's a really great option for most people. With fat injection, it can be done under local or sedation or general anesthesia. It all depends on the volume of fat that you're injecting. So if a person wants a little bit of lip augmentation and you only are thinking of injecting a cc or two, which is a very tiny amount, then that could be done under local anesthesia. If you're reconstructing a breast and you need more like 250 cc's or you know a cup of fat, then that needs to be done under, under general anesthesia or sedation it's your passion and interest for it as well as your education and then your technical expertise so if you are very interested in doing that and you have expertise in facial anatomy then you, you can become an expert um, I also think it the other aspect of it is just your communication with your patients so you understand what they want